India is celebrating the 75th anniversary of independence, Azadi Ka Amrit Mohatsav, and in this series, Saga of Freedom Struggle, we are honoring the freedom fighters and the heroes who were instrumental in building our nation. In tonight's episode, let us delve into the efforts of our heroes in their fight for our independence. On 9th of November 1947, Junagar was annexed to the Indian Territory. Junagar was a princely state in the Kathiawad region, where most of other princely states had already acceded to India. The ruler of Junagar was Nawab Mahabat Khan, Rasul Khanji. In May 1947, Shah Nawaz Bhutto from Karachi became the Diwan of Junagar. Under his influence, the Nawab decided to accede to Pakistan on 15th of August. Though the Nawab had earlier given the impression that the future of Junagarh lay in joining India. To satisfy the popular demand of the people of Junagarh, the then Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, made an offer to Pakistan to accept and abide by the verdict of the people of Junagarh in respect of the accession of the state to either of the dominions. People of the Junagarh were becoming agitated with the Nawab and the situation was becoming tense with each passing day. After failing over a month to get a response from Pakistan to the offer, India put in place a series of measures that held the threat of military action against Junagarh. The Nawab of Junagarh fled to Karachi by air with his family and his pet dogs. On 8th of November, Bhutto asked the government of India to directly take over the administration of Junagarh through the regional commissioner at Rajkot. India had indicated that it would want to formalize the arrangement through a plebiscite. This was held on February the 20th, 1948. Of around 2 lakh registered voters, only 91 cast their votes in favor of the accession to Pakistan. And thus, with the wish of the people, the princely state of Junagar became a part of India. Today is also the death anniversary of Pushpalata Das, a freedom fighter from Assam. At the age of just six years, she joined the Banar Sena to popularize the Khadi among the people and organized Chakra Sangh. Being inspired by her mother, she took pledge to free the motherland and never looked back ever since. At the age of 14, she was expelled from high school for protesting against the hanging of Bhagat Singh. During 1940, her studies came to an end when she was jailed for individual satyagraha. From the year 1940 to 1942, Pushpalata Das was in Bombay as a member of the Women's Subcommittee of the National Planning Committee. During that period, she worked with Mridula Sarabhai and Vijaya Lakshmi Pandit for development and constructive works. In the year 1942, Pushpalata Das married Omio Kumar Das, who was also a true Gandhian and a social worker. After her marriage, Pushpalata organized the Shanti Bahini and Mrityu Bahini with her co-workers in Tezpur. Pushpalata was supposed to lead the procession to put the national tricolor flag on the compound of Gokpur police station. However, at that time fate intervened and Kanaklata Barua took charge over the procession from Pushpalata Das and fell to the British bullets. Post-independence, she served as a member of parliament. She also worked as an editor of a well-known Assamese magazine, Jayanti. Pushpalata Das was offered the Tamra Patra by the Indian government for her services rendered during the freedom movement. But she refused to accept the Tamrapatra. The noble soul breathed her last on the 9th of November 2003 at the age of 88 years. <laughs> 